Now we're going to look at a handy way to analyze beams. And there are three ways that a beam could fail. It could shear vertically, uh, kind of uh, like a pair of scissors up and down. It could shear horizontally or it could bend. Here's a simple beam with a distributed load. And a vertical shear is uh, represented by this second picture. Horizontal shear is where the thing might bend and you'd have fibers sliding past each other like in a wood beam. And then here's bending. And we're most concerned about vertical shear and even more about bending. And how we analyze these is we use something called shear and moment diagrams, this graphical method of figuring out where the maximum shear will be and especially where the maximum bending moment will be. And in this simple beam, there's a load in the middle. And you might be able to picture, oh yeah, that thing's going to bend all right. And it's probably going to bend the most right in the middle where that load is. And sure enough, here at the bottom, here is a picture of how big the bending moment is. And what we are looking for is a, a high point in our bending moment graph. And we'll see how to find that in just a minute. And the reason you care about that is uh, if you have a beam, here's a beam at the bottom here, you might have a real long beam and you don't need a big old giant heavy beam all the way along, but there might be some place in the middle of the beam where it needs to be a little thicker. And you can make a built up beam of your own or you can weld on uh, plates as reinforcing or channel iron is reinforcing or even a T shape is reinforcing just in the place where the bending moment is the greatest. You might also be needing to splice a beam and think about it you don't want to put a splice right where the bending moment is greatest that would be bad so you'd want to put the splice off to the side once you figure out the moment. And here's how you figure it out with these diagrams you um, draw a free body diagram of the beam. They call it a load diagram when they're doing these things. You figure out how big the reaction is at each end. Then you draw a vertical shear diagram right under the load. And then right under the shear diagram, you draw a moment diagram. And um, Employers tell us that they don't really need us to know how to do all the mathematical calculations and derivations for these diagrams because nowadays um, companies just use beam analysis software. So employers said what they want us to know is just how these things are used uh, and kind of what these shapes mean so that we can, when we're looking at the beam software, we know what we're looking at. Here's an example of a simple beam. So the first step is we'll draw a load diagram under that beam, and here it is. The next step is to figure out how big the reactions are under each end. And as you remember uh, from various other problems we've worked on. Usually if you want to find the load over here at B, you would start with this equilibrium equation, sum of all moments equals zero, and you'd go force times distance, force times distance, and you'd solve for B. In this case, this is a symmetrical beam with a load right in the middle. So right off the bat, you can probably recognize half the load is going to be carried at each end of the beam. Each reaction is going to be half the load. So we can just go straight there. And then under the load diagram, we draw the vertical shear diagram. They're always labeled V. V stands for vertical shear. And one thing to notice about shear and moment diagrams is they always start at zero and they always end at zero. And then we, we could do calculations and I'll give you a separate um, 
PowerPoint set of PowerPoint slides so you can see how to do them if you're interested. But we don't need to because we're using the graphical method. So what you do is the the shear diagram just matches what the load diagram is doing. If the load pushes up 10k, that's 10,000 pounds, remember. If the load pushes up 10k, the shear diagram jumps up 10k. See that? Then nothing is happening, nothing is happening until we get to the middle where that 20k load is coming down. So now 20k is coming down. That means your shear diagram goes down 20k. And you were starting from, uh, you were at 10k on your diagram. If you're at 10k and you go down 20k, where does that take you? 10 minus 20 takes you down to negative 10. So here's your graph going down 20k pounds, down to minus 10. Now what's going on? Nothing is happening, nothing is happening, nothing is happening until we get to the very end again. And here's the other reaction at B. The load goes up 10k, so your shear diagram goes up 10k. And that's handy because it brings you back to zero, and shear diagrams always begin and end at zero. So there's your vertical shear diagram. Now we'll draw the moment diagram. And we put the moment diagram right under the shear diagram. Notice how they're all lined up in a row. And here's how you figure that out in a simple way. Here's our vertical shear diagram. And in this particular beam, we've got a rectangular area. And what is it? It's force. Um, 10k pounds times distance, 10 feet, force times distance is moment, the area of that rectangle is 100k foot-pounds, and so that's where you put the dot on your diagram. You go from 0 up to 100. Let's move over to the right side. Now your shear diagram goes down below the zero line. It's down in negative territory. So you've got uh, a peak up here at 100. What is 100 minus 100? Zero. So now your diagram comes back down to zero. And notice you can now see where your maximum bending moment is going to be. And you can now see how big it is. It's 100,000 foot-pounds. Let's look at a different example. Here's one that has two loads on it. That's very common. So first we'll draw the load diagram right under the picture of the beam. Then we'll find the reaction at each end. And again, we could figure out these reactions our usual way, which is to start with sum of all moments equals zero. Force times distance, force times distance, force times distance. But this beam is also symmetrical. See that? The loads are uh, equally arranged. They're equal distant from each end of the beam. So we can just quickly say, well, all right, the loads add up to, f to 1,000 pounds. That half of it will go on each end. And there we go. That's what I did here. Now we'll draw your shear diagram. And we remember that they always start at zero, whatever else is happening. See the funny shape of the shear diagram here? This one's a little bit different. So the load goes up 500 pounds at the beginning at A. So your shear diagram goes up 500 pounds. Then nothing is happening. Then the load goes down 500 pounds. So the shear goes back down 500 pounds. And that takes you back down to the zero line. Now from this force to this force, nothing else is happening. So our graph just continues on horizontally till we get to the next force. 500 pounds going down, so the shear diagram goes down 500. 
then nothing happening nothing happening then at the end at B the shear sorry the load jumps up 500 so the shear jumps up 500 and that brings you back to zero now we'll draw the moment diagram here's the area of our shear diagram 500 pounds times 10 feet gives us 5,000 foot-pounds. Then nothing is happening in this middle zone, so our moment diagram stays level. Then we get to the last block, and that block has an area of 500 pounds, uh, sorry, negative 500 pounds times 10 feet, so that's negative 5,000 foot-pounds. So it comes back down to zero. And here is the shape of our moment diagram for this beam. Now let's say a, a word about the shapes of these things. When you were in algebra class, you probably did some graphing of lines. And I don't know if they talked about, oh, this is a first degree curve or a second degree curve. Uh, but if they did, here's the deal. If you have an exponent of zero, you have a horizontal line. If you have an exponent of one, or basically that's no exponent, you have a sloping line. And you might remember from algebra class that the equation for a sloping line is y equals mx plus b. That's a sloping line. Okay, that's a first degree curve sloping line. y equals mx and plus b is the y-intercept. And then a second degree curve is when you start to get exponents. So x squared has a curvy thing like that. You could have x cubed and it would be a curve but a slightly different shape. So on and so forth. Well, it turns out that the shear diagram is always one degree higher than the load. And the moment diagram below that is always one degree higher than the shear diagram. What does that mean? That means, for example, if the shear diagram is horizontal, then the moment diagram will be sloping. If you had one where the shear diagram were sloping, which we haven't looked at, then the moment diagram would be curved and so forth. So that um, kind of sums up that pattern we've been seeing. When our shear diagram has a horizontal bar, our moment diagram has a slopey bar. And you can, uh, as the saying goes, you can take that to the bank, which means you can always count on that being true. And I've given you a set of PowerPoint slides with some guidelines for these diagrams in a separate set of slides in case you're interested in reviewing that.